Good morning and welcome back to the Euro Breakfast. I'm chuckling away because I see Ben just dancing about every time he's on this to that tune. <laughs> that tune, that tune's a banger. Absolute banger. I, I should probably get to introductions straight away. Let me start with the man on your right. Don't know what side I'm on at this point. Mr Ben Grant for the official hey, catch-up. How are you doing, my man? Not bad, mate, you? Not bad, other than the fact I almost slept in. But, you know, we live, we live in well. Um, and below, by popular demand... I was That's a low the bar. That's a low bar. <laughs> John Walker for the Scots Abroad pod, bringing the dry and gold propaganda right back to us. And he's well, anti Steve O'Donnell views we've as got, well. We've got Ryan Gold propaganda, right? We've got some stuff to, to spread today. We, we do, we do, we'll get there. He's if got a new blue eye boy, is he not? Who's the new lad you're going to have the Jack boy, uh, The MLS. The the I've, boy. I've been getting on about him for ages, man. He's he's amazing, <laughs> that boy. That boy is the the Scott McTominay clone that everyone's forgot about. There you go. It's just a shame he's going to play for the American two seconds, but <laughs> we're obviously here because we've just had the first round of knockout games in the Euros, and I, I don't really know how to sum up yesterday. It was weird. Like we had one game that obviously we'll get into it that was just an absolute walkover in one game that shouldn't have been but they were the wrong way around I felt like um, so we'll start with Wales because Denmark just squished them in the end and I, it was a bit of your head's gone for Wales in the end I thought like we'll start with Ben what were your thoughts on the game? Yeah I think it was it was quite tight from, from for the first half and I thought this could go either way Wales could definitely got chances here to, to get a result and, mm. but obviously Denmark came out second half and just turned up a notch and they get the goal early with Dolberg and then, um, as you say, it came a bit of a capitulation really, wasn't it? It was just a bit of a f- absolute fold from Wales. Surprised because they played well through the tournament. I thought um, Big Moore up front always looks looks dangerous, no matter mm-hmm. when he's playing. And just one of those games where I think Denmark obviously had their issues before um, in the group stages and stuff. And they've also came on a game, but it's probably a performance we, we would expect from, from Denmark against a team like Wales, let's be honest. So it was... Um, it's good to see him get a result. Quite happy for Denmark to get a, a nice convincing win. Yeah, I'm just happy I got a prediction right, finally. <laughs> After about, what, is this about the 16th go of this morning show? Finally managed to get something right. But, I John, what are your thoughts? Because it was 4 now going on 6, wasn't it? It was horrible. I, I remember, I honestly felt pretty confident about Wales going into the game when I found out um, Hulson was missing. We obviously know Eriksson's missing, so it's a very mm-hmm. different team losing its attacking midfielder and its main centre forward. But I was aware that Dolberg was a cracking player. Um, yeah. So I wasn't I wasn't too I wasn't too worried but Poulsen was a starter so and after the first fifteen minutes I felt Wales were, were in control. Wales looked really good. And um, Bale looked busy, had a couple of efforts on goal. Um, Ramsey had a shot that was blocked by Bale inside the box. Moore looked like he was involved the whole time. And then just out of nowhere Denmark just seemed to have this uh, clutch on them pressure they couldn't get out i think they had about five corners in the space of like three minutes at one point and after mm-hmm. that denmark just swarmed them and they couldn't get out and it was pretty horrible to watch and they, they had to come out at half time and go at them and i still think the second goal is a foul I, I don't understand how that's not a foul on Moore. i think if you come through the back it's it's something that if it had been given and stopped they're dead there'd have been no controversy about giving the foul but everything that then transpires after that, it becomes a massive decision. And I always yeah. think that with referees, just make the simple decision all the time and you'll probably do your job perfectly well. Um, but I just think that caused Bale to lose the head. And then I think after that, they all, they all just lost it. They all chucked it. Um, I was really surprised that Moore, Ben, I don't know if you've seen in the Trample Bet Facebook chat, 
Moore being five to one to get carded <laughs> after his man manager's comments saying that he can't keep him controlled on the pitch, and I was like, <laughs> I put that right away. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd thirty five quid in my account, and within what thirty minutes it was paid out for the softest yellow card I've ever seen in my life. Uh, he just lost it. Yeah. He get booked for gravity, right? He jumps up and then falls back down and hits somebody. He's like, that's gravity's fault, it's not his fault. <laughs> but yeah, just uh, disappointing. But Denmark are everyone's favourites because of everything that's happened. So, quite happy. I wanted Wales to go through, but now that Denmark are through, I have one team that I can just solely focus and say, that's the team I want to do well now, the whole way through. Well, the, the prediction I made yesterday was the winner of that game goes to semis at the very least. And I'm feeling pretty good about it now, to be honest. Yeah. Um, but ugh, the thing with the film, the second goal, if you're going to send off um, the boy for Liverpool, the young lad, for what he did, you've got to give that as a foul, surely. <laughs> like, they're just, you can't equate that, you know? You can't say that's not a foul and then send off the boy for what you get sent off for. So it's... See that, um, see that foul that Harry Wilson does? That is a foul Harry Wilson. That, there you go. that if you if you commit it, in a game of sevens to your mate, you wouldn't expect your mate to react. But if the foul's done on you, you're going to fucking react. And that is what it is. So it's, it's a red card. It's a yellow card if you commit it, and it's a red card if you've been committed on in the game. And that's the way players react. Because I remember Shaka get sent off for the exact same thing, and I was like, that's just a trap. That's just, that's just mm -hmm. a trap. That was just kicking somebody's back leg to trip them up. It's something you do in school every day of the week to one of your pals walking in front of you. <laughs> I was, I was stunned, but I think it was probably the aggression in which everyone seemed to be kind of flying into tackles. But the ref probably was trying to just control. But again, the ref could have probably got away with a yellow card and calming it down. But yeah, it was kind of gutting to see Wales go out in, in that bad a fashion, to be honest. Yeah, I, I think they'll be more upset with the way they played than the result, I think. Because as soon as it hit 2-0, that was kind of... I felt like that they were just never getting back into it. And it was kind of summed up with the way... Bill reacted in the, the press conference. I don't know if you saw that, Ben, that as soon as the question was asked about his future, he went, no, you're all right, and just walked out. <laughs> Excellent. Um, which I quite enjoyed, actually, because the I journalist knew that he shouldn't have been asking the question, but he was like, I'm going to ask it anyway. And he didn't even hang about for the end of the question. He just went, you know, <laughs> exit Bye. stage, right? But um, he's got to play on, surely. Like, they've got a World Cup in 18 months, potentially, they're getting to. There's not a rumour though that he wants to play uh, turn pro at the golf. That was it actually was. Like a, legit, well, a legitimate rumour. He wants to try and get his PGA <laughs> card and all that. Because apparently he's excellent at golf. Obviously, there's well, well documented that he likes a bit of golf in Spain and that. But um, apparently, he's really, really good. Like, uh, plays off like three or something. So um, I can't see him going pro with a handicap of three, I'll be honest. But yeah, and um, five and you're a pro, effectively, isn't it? There's a point for sure there. You can't argue with 4 0, but you've got to take into account Wales have travelled over 5,000 miles leading into it, which it's it's a point when you think teams like England haven't travelled yeah. and other teams have travelled thousands of miles. It's The nature of this tournament has made it quite unequal that way. There's going yeah. to be teams, well, Italy looked a bit lethargic yesterday as well. They've not really moved that much. They've only had one big journey, but. Certain teams are going to benefit from having home stadiums here as well as the other thing. Um, having those afternoons as well. But I guess we'll finish on, like, DM was asking about Denmark. Do we see them getting past Germany in a potential semi-final? Do we see them going all the way to the final? I don't know what Germany they're playing, though. Like, are they playing Germany mm. to play Portugal? Or are they playing Germany that could barely, be, could barely get a result against Hungary? I think Germany, Germany are going to be a team that's so unpredictable, which is why I'm struggling with the England-Germany game. Like, in my in my heart, obviously I'm screaming, Germany better turn up and do the job. Mm -hmm. But in my head, I'm going, England look too pragmatic and they look like they'll have identified the same issues that everyone else will have seen in Germany and play on them. But it's like, I don't know what Germany turns up. Like, G Germany seem to just be, I think everyone's, it's almost cliche by now, right? Germany just turn up at tournaments and just start grinding out results and just mm -hmm. get more and more impressive as they go on. Remember World Cup in 2014? They struggled to get past Algeria. That was the biggest one. They needed a result against USA in the last group game and drew one each to go through. Germany did not play well in the World Cup they won and they won the World Cup. So it's, I think, um, German, Germany, Denmark, I, I can see that being the, the semi-final. But I think there's a permutation where it could be Sweden, Denmark in the semis as well, if everything goes right. It should be quite interesting. 
I'd be sure to say Sweden there, but stranger things have happened, I suppose. Um, but yeah, we'll move on then because I don't think there's too much to reflect on with that Wales Denmark game. It was what you see is what you get. Just Wales didn't really turn up in Denmark, dominated. Italy Austria is the most interesting game we've had in this tournament so far, I think, because I've cracked up as the best team in the in the groups and they just didn't really turn up Italy, especially the second half. Austria missed a chance. I tweeted out about the eighth minute saying they've got to win this in the next ten minutes. This is our chance. And <laughs> for a change I managed to get something right again, but I am I'm, I'm not sure where I sit in Italy now. Well go to yourself first, John. Like do you still see them as favourites, or like did Austria give a blueprint how to play them? Um, I, I think that was it. I think Austria showed how you can counterattack on mm. Italy, but I do think that Austria team looked like it maybe came together a little bit better than the previous games in their group. I think Arnautovic has hadn't played for what ten weeks because of when the mm -hmm. Chinese Super League finished. So I think he actually started to look a wee bit sharper in that game, and it allowed them to play off him. So I, I do think there was that involved. I think maybe a bit of nerves got to Italy as well because they had been so good um, it's why I don't I understand tournaments are long but when you've played your free games as you said at home in Rome you've not had any travel I'm always very indifferent as towards changing your striker who's scoring goals for the last group game if he's scoring goals you play him the same way Belgium did with Lukaku you play your striker you let him continue his form you let him continue to get goals in every group game so he goes into that game confident i think he'd want maybe one half chance the one he hits from outside the box that hits the post in that game i don't think italy created much and i think that is the problem with changing your, your front line um, in a game the flip side to that is Chiesa was one of the players that played the last group game and when he came on he looked really really sharp and got yep. the goal so it, it works both ways but i would never have had a mobile out of that team in the last group game and he looked like somebody who's now kind of dipped a little bit just from missing that game. Yeah, it looks like you needed the game again, definitely. Um, how did you see this one, Ben? I pretty much the same as you guys. I was surprised, to be honest, about Austria because I, I didn't really think they were all that good. They didn't done well mm. enough to get to the, to the knockout, but I didn't see a lawful out in the tournament. I thought they could get anything out of, out of um, Italy at all, but we've seen Italy play what, three, three games now, four games now, and they look class in the first three, and they obviously just came out of this game maybe a little bit, as we say, a wee bit tired and a wee bit, but they still had that moment of brilliance, you know, get Sp uh, Spinozola on the ball, and he was like, pinging those passes across to, to Chiesa for the goal, it's just, that's the difference, I think, between Austria and, and Italy, the fact that they just get those those guys who could just totally unlock the defences with, with, with key passes like that, and that was obviously the, the difference, and um, obviously a little bit nervy when they score the goal and make it 2-1, they you know, two minutes sweat there for um, for Italy, but they've done the job, and I think that's the thing about Italy. All through the tournament, they'll do the job. But they've only what conceded one goal, um, and have plenty mm. th plenty options going forward. Um, like John was saying, they've got plenty of guys there to they come in as well in, in terms of depth. So I don't have any concerns about Italy. Either. I think they'll still um, they'll run at least to the semis. I think I think the France game's going to oh, say France game. Presumably, France get through. France is going to be the challenge um, for them in the semis, and then. But if they get to the final, I'd fancy them against anyone um, in the other section. Um, to be quite honest, whether it's England, Germany, or Holland, I think they'll they'll dust either any of those teams, no problem. I mean, at least Danny Murphy discovered that Don Rumor might be a decent keeper. Jude, like, what was that about? Oh, this guy looks a half decent keeper. I, he's been around for how long? I don't know. <laughs> Just played for AC Milan for like the last like. <laughs> Six years or some of that, you know. He's Danny just Murphy, though, like, you know. <laughs> let's let's talk about Danny Murphy for a second. Yeah. How does that guy get? It. How does that guy get paid to talk about football? Like, <laughs> I don't understand it, right? There's guys like us here that they do this for free, and you've got guys like Danny Murphy getting paid money. Now, come on, like, there's a, there's a imbalance there for sure. I think Danny Murphy, like the thing about him is he sat there and he's going, "We need a new Mark Lawrence," <laughs> and he's trying to be Mark Lawrence, but. He it just, it, it sounds like he'd rather be anywhere else than watching a game of football. And I, I hate him. <laughs> He's never impressed, is he? He's yeah. never impressed by anything. No. I, I, don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. We, we say this. We all worked full-time jobs in and around watching all this football and investigating mm -hmm. time, investing time and investigating players and leagues so that we have an actual opinion on the things. And there's guys that are getting paid to go and do that job 
who sit all day and their job is to watch football and be prepped for football and yet they know nothing like you said Donnarumma Donnarumma is currently in the middle of a AC Milan contract talk where like him and Mendes are trying to get like 50 million out of them no. just to sign the new contract that's that's like a talking point right there that this will be like the biggest agency signing on fee ever because they know that he's one of the best goalies in the world that it cost them 50, 60, 70 million to replace the guy and they've caught on to this and, and to talk about him like they keep, I think Genius has said as well this is an Italian team with no superstars you're like what? What are you talking about? What are you? What are you talking? You clearly not watch the Italian league. Then yeah. you don't. And you don't watch it. These players don't go out the Italian league because they love the Italian league. That's why they stay there. They don't stay there because nobody wants them. Everyone yeah. for the last ten years would have tried to sign Bonucci, Chiellini, and everyone will be all over Barella after the season he's just had. It's so. It's so. It's so frustrating. It's like the to- it's to- even the- who is it? The- was it Daniel Sturridge? Was the last time we said they called Italy a dark Aye. horse? Like, what, what, what? You mean the team that won the World Cup 14 years ago? Aye. Um, uh, it's still one of the funniest tweets I've seen ever. Like, they've only just won three group games with no conceding. Aye, dark horse. He's for the tour. And there was the other, the other thing I was going to say was, as having seen like, I remember when Arsenal were going for the the unbeaten league season and see their like, last five results when they knew they were going for this record. They were terrible. They never turned up for any game. They were scraping draws against Newcastle, Portsmouth. They just scraped by Leicester in the last game. And that was what Italy broke their post-world unbeaten record by not getting beaten in the 90 minutes mm-hmm. last night. So there was also not just the knockout phase, it was like a world record for them yeah. that they were trying to break. So I think just everyone, I think everyone just get a wee bit at your feet and get panicky. I think we'll see something totally different in the next round. John Walker, with well. the, John Walker with the, the true to form, first mention of Arsenal, we would have Granit Xhaka this morning, <laughs> not like him at all. I, I almost bit when he said Granit, but I, I moved on very swiftly. So, um, but For Andy in the chat, please interpret what Danny meant by percentage ball. I think he just didn't think of a phrase to say and he just came out with it. I'll be honest what with you. What just, was it in reference to? I don't remember that standing out. Nah, me I, th- I think he was trying to talk about Catanacho and he didn't know the word Catanacho. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> that's what it was. <laughs> he, was, he was trying to talk about like, the Italian way of playing football and he was like, uh, percentage ball. Aye, we'll go with that. Tell me to play more football <laughs> manager and he'll be sorted. It's true. It's very true. But uh, have we got any worries in after that game that obviously they turned it on the extra time? Chiesa was a difference, but possibly the worst defended corner I've ever seen with a guy heading it up six inches off the ground manages to get it in at the near post I'm I'm not convinced that like, I don't know they've, they've got a, they're not going to concede many but I still think you can get at them in a way and I think Austria showed that and if anyone's playing them now they'll watch that game back and go right let's do the same things obviously there was a lot of it that Italy didn't play that well like they weren't stringing passes together the second half like, I think Verratti was one of their sole kind of bright spots and Locatelli came on for him obviously because he's not fit but I don't, I, don't, I don't really know what to think of the Italians after I'll be honest I think the thing about Italy now is that that'll be like their wake up call that game mm-hmm. and they'll probably go on now and, and do well in the rest of the games and if you're any of the other teams coming up in the draw you'd be pretty, pretty gutted they had their bad game in the, in the, in the round of 16 rather than in the, in the semis or the quarters because they'll probably turn up now and be um, be a totally different team and we'll, we'll dust everyone sure I'm just happy you're there to type that message if that's the case mate Stu <laughs> will take on Danny Murphy there <laughs> um, and DM's got a point no men on the corners eh, sorry no men in the post at corners so it's another thing the Italians do that quite a lot of teams do now and that's why the goal was scored ultimately if there's a guy there on the near post that's not it's not a goal and it's a it's a zonal marking thing oh here we go mm-hmm. you're saying if your license coming out of your boys here we go here we go that's what he comes in for your zone it's judging the player that marks the front of the, the front corner of the six yard box from the near side uh, corner is you give that guy the responsibility to judge whether he can win a header or drop onto the post if the corner's going over your head, you drop on a post and he's went and judged that he can get to the header and he's fucked it, basically. And then that's that's why there's nobody on the post. That guy's only meant to be on the post if it's going over his head. 
that's the zone you want to cover. You, you don't want to use an extra player to cover the near post. That's that's it. In case they put, if they put an extra body up, you you want to cover that zone. Some that's why you pay the big bucks for those some... licenses, so you can say that he's <laughs> fucked up for a corner. <laughs> Somebody phone the BBC. We've got Danny Murphy's sub sitting right in front of us. <laughs> Uh, I love that. I am going to my A-license just to say it. <laughs> but um, we'll move on swiftly <laughs> before we get the Granny Jackie again. Um, today's games, we have a couple of belters, I think. Netherlands, Czech Republic first up at five o'clock. I think this one's a sneaky good game. Like, the Czechs are... They're not the best team in the tournament, but they've got a guy up front who's one of the elite strikers in Patrick Schick. The Dutch have looked fantastic. So far, Gini Wijnaldum's ran the show for them. I think there's goals in this game. And obviously, I think the Dutch will win it, but it wouldn't surprise me too much to see the Czechs having a bit of a, a go here and maybe even threatening to go through. I think um, Holland win. Uh, Netherlands, sorry. Go me. Everyone gets upset when you say Holland on it. Netherlands, yeah, I, um, I think Netherlands absolutely dust check the Czech Republic, honestly. I think they win like 3 0. I think they're um, I think they're a top, top side, and I think they can go pretty far here. Um, I don't I haven't seen anything from Czech Republic that says they'll they'll mount a challenge to the Netherlands. So, um, Depay, Ronaldo, defence is looking pretty tight now. We had a wee bit of question marks over the defence to begin with, but um, I think they look, um, they look good. Yeah, Strudel's just said Dumfries MVP. I think he's been great for the Dutch so far. I, I didn't really know who he was, I'll be honest, before the tournament. He's one of the very few players that I've looked up that hasn't played for Atalanta that I've been quite impressed <laughs> by. But um, I fancy him to have another big game because the Czechs looked a wee bit vulnerable for the overlap in previous games. What do you think, John? I think just, just by how many chances we created against them as well. Like Although we lost that game in opening game, we created, what, 19 chances against them? Um, mm -hmm. If you give Holland anywhere near that um, percentage of the ball to use and players like Dumfries, uh, Frankie de Jong pulling strings, when Yaldum getting forward, Depay, who I still think is waiting to, to really, really land at this tournament, although he's got yeah. goals, I think this will be Holland's um, no problem. Uh, the only thing that would worry me is, like you said, Schick is such a good player. Like he doesn't mm -hmm. need a lot. He needs one, one or two chances to get a goal, and I think Holland will give him that. But I think Holland will have two or three goals in the bag in this game. Um, I've just not been impressed by Czech Republic at all, man. And which is embarrassing because they got out of our group. But um, I think I think sorry, Netherlands take care of this quite comfortably as well. I think it's like a three-one. No, I agree with you. I don't think the Czechs have been that great. Like they've they got a kind of bit of a jammy draw against Croatia. Ultimately, they beat us when we had loads of chances and didn't take them. It would be just like football for them to win this game, though, because <laughs> they've done <laughs> nothing so far. But, um, aye, so we well, are saying Memphis Depay hasn't really turned up, but I, I like the look of the boy Marlon up front, the young lad yep. with loads of pace they've got. And when you've got a guy, Liverpool's played Genie Wijnaldum as a sitting midfielder for a good couple of seasons now. They've released him as this number 10 and he's been unbelievable. Like, I, I think the thing with the Netherlands is if you stop him, you stop a lot of what they do. Do the Czechs have that about them or is he still going to run the show, Ben? What do you reckon? I think he'll still run the show. I think he's looked excellent in the whole tournament. Yeah. We obviously know from Liverpool and he's, he's a great, great player for Liverpool, but as you say, play a totally different role in, in the Liverpool side. But um, that, that change you've seen is, is definitely... Definitely one that um, that I think will be the too much for for Czech Republic. Czech Republic, as you say, haven't seen much from them so far. I mean, we all know um, Stick. He's he's decent um, for sure. But again, I don't think he's had like loads of like great chances. Obviously, he's, go he's one of his goals against Scotland is is that that worldy half mm -hmm. um, straight from the, the edge of the box. And the header's nice, but again, we can look at that and say defending was a bit pish, but. Um, I think, for me, it's, it's Holland all day. I think the thing as well is they've got these kind of young guys like Malin, Graven, Bass, and things like that, even like on the bench and stuff as well that they can come in that we probably didn't know an awful lot about because of, well, well, John would know all about them because he watches the division <laughs> and all that. He'd know, know the full the full Buna, but for folk like me who don't have that level of detail, um, you obviously seen those guys turn up at the tournament and they look capable to come in. So again, our team with, with plenty of depth and. 
obviously, Mevlin's had their moments in terms of kind of poorer kind of fight last what six eight years or so. Uh, but look, they're coming back with a team and they've got a unit, I think, as well. So I fully expect um, Holland to be uh, Netherlands to be to be pretty good um, and have no no issues getting by Czech Republic. I mind uh, I mind Wenger I mind Wenger saying years ago because uh, Donny Malum was at Arsenal when he was at like, sixteen. <laughs> And, and Wenger was saying that Donny Malum was like Donny Malum was the striker they'd been waiting for to come through, like an ex kind of Nicholas and Elka, and he just got homesick, so they had to release him. He was like, I can't be here anymore. He was only like 16, 17, and they released mm-hmm. him, and then he went to PSV's youth team, scored hundreds of goals, and then they've immediately promoted him. And you're like, oh my god, man, somebody being homesick has like cost Arsenal a centre forward. <laughs> Four, that's that's I was going to say there's another Arsenal reference, please. <laughs> but can we count Elka? Maybe that's five. We count Elka, that's five. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to count about 17 am. different clubs if you're bringing an elk in. <laughs> if Ben's going to pull up John on stuff, I think it's a bit harsh of Ben to go, I shake effort for the outside of the box. I think it was a bit more than that, to be fair. Did I say it? Oh, sorry. <laughs> He's, He's, right. Right. <laughs> He's right. wonder goal for 18 yards. <laughs> Whatever it was. I mean, hot take for, um, for, 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 uh, for Holland. Just don't have your keeper sitting too high, you'll be fine. <laughs> But we'll move on swiftly to tonight's belter. This is a big game, I think, so far. Belgium-Portugal at 8 o'clock tonight. I, I think the Belgians go in as slight favourites, but again, like Germany, Portugal, have they turned up in an, all their games so far? Um, you just don't know what Portugal you're going to get. Whereas with Belgium, they're pretty consistent. The, the guys have got... They've not really got the quality backups, but their first team is strong as you're going to get. And Lukaku's been on fire so far this tournament. I'll come to yourself, John, first, because you mentioned they played most of their big players in the third game. Do you think that's going to stand them in good stead here? Aye. Yeah, I mean, but so did Portugal. But the, the only thing I can think of, and I heard this referenced, and I didn't buy into it until I started looking at previous tournaments, was teams that have played in a harder group do tend to do better as the tournament goes on because they've had a harder test early on and they've had to figure things out. Portugal mm-hmm. get out of that group of death. Um, they, they looked good against France. Uh, I, don't, I don't think France looked particularly good, to be honest. So I, I can't really judge where I, where I stand on how good Portugal looked because against Germany, they were horrendous. It was 4-2 going on 5-6-7-8. And if they play like that, Belgium will pull them apart the same way. Um, I said the last time that Pepe needs to start getting dirty or else he's just bypassed. Yeah. And if he doesn't get physical with Lukaku or Hazard on his side, if they continue with Pepe being right in the back three, Hazard and Lukaku are going to destroy him. So I think this is a game where we're going to see Pepe get back to his um, his old antics. It's going to be a Pepe masterclass tonight. Um, if they have to stop Belgium, he's going to have to do every dirty trick in the book to keep them at bay and keep Lukaku at bay. Because otherwise, if they play anywhere near as open as they did against Germany, they are in a lot of trouble. However, the fallout for that Germany game is Renato Sanchez came in for the France game and he looked like the player that we all heard about five years ago, yeah. breaking through. He looked, I mean, even Paulinho when he came on, the two of them sitting in midfield looked amazing against France. And I think that'll be the end of that. If you take out William Cavalier and put in Paulinho and Sanchez, you at least have a base to have Jota, Fernandez, Bernardo Silva and Ronaldo to go forward for there. But... That being said, I cannot see past Belgium. I just think Belgium looks so, so good. Um, barring the first hour against Denmark when they'd rested their three best players, essentially. Um, but once they changed, the game turned. I, I thought Lukaku's a monster, man. This guy's this, this is what he's been made for. Hmm. Yeah, this is, this is his tournament. I, I think he'll go through and he'll, this will be the end of Ronaldo in Portugal tonight. I kind of agree. I think Belgium's the team that will go through and you'd think Lukaku will have a big say in it but if there's one guarantee we can make Pepe will be up to dirty tricks that's just it's going to happen you know he's he's been waiting for this moment knockout football <laughs> is where he thrives and just
just uh, picking up on a couple of comments here. Deny and Bayata, championship level defenders. I kind of agree with that, Graham. I'm not impressed with why either of them. Um, and DM picking up on the Pepe, being his old self there. <laughs> Sergio Busquets at it as well. Busquets is subtle though. There's a difference there. Um, what do we think about this? So what Stu was saying, I think Belgium being one of the most overrated teams for years always crumble on the big stage. Poach got to win. What do you think about that? No chance, Stu, no chance. I no. think the thing about looking back at Belgium, they've probably been building up to like this tournament probably. You've seen every every tournament they, they get progressively better. They've been effectively well nobody's pop maybe about ten years ago to, mm -hmm. to becoming a team that you really expected to, to do well because they've got these guys that have came through and I think they're about to peak whether it's it's now or potentially the World Cup next year uh, two years or next year whatever it is um, it's one of the two but I think I think they're due um, to, to get to a final of it and win it I, I'll see I see that happen within say that if it's this tournament we wouldn't be shocked if it's the next tournament again we wouldn't be surprised yeah, the, these things, these things always take time, man. See the trajectory of Germany. It's honestly the parallels between Germany since '99 to when they won the World Cup in Belgium to this point, exactly this point, is the exact same. Germany won yeah. semi-final '06, final '08, semi-final, semi-final, won the World Cup. Belgium would be kind of in the round that at the same time. They knocked out Brazil for the last World Cup. Yeah, Belgium, they're not bottling it. They're, these are tournaments where you need to get everything perfect, and I think it's it's now. I think it needs to be now for them because um, I think you have got the, 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 those defenders. I don't see people coming underneath it, which would ring alarm bells for the World Cup. I think it's this tournament has to be the one they will win. Yeah, I think it's now or never because they're about to have that defensive kind of changeover and it ain't good what they're changing over to. So I think if there was ever a, a must win tournament for this group of players, it's now because you don't fancy 18 months in the future, even less pace in that defence, the likes of Vertonghen and, I, I don't know, Qatar's just got so many things up in the air, doesn't that, about the way the kind of tournament is going to be and aircon and such, like you just, I think you just need to try and win this for the golden generation chat to come out and yeah. all that kind of chat, but we, that's maybe a nice wee segue we can get on because I'm fed up with that phrase, and I'm, I've been meaning to have this chat for a while. Surely we should only be calling a team, like, a nation's golden generation, that if they do something. Surely we shouldn't be christening a golden generation if they've not achieved anything yet. And I'm going to direct this to England, so sorry if you're English <laughs> and watching this. If I had a pound for every single time the BBC have called this team a global generation, eh, sorry, golden generation. I'd have at least enough for a couple of rounds in the pub. <laughs> Do we really think this England team's that good? No. I don't think so. I no. genuinely don't think so. I think the, the golden generation thing that was labelled at the Beckham eh, 2002 side was legitimate because they, they had players that were winning the Champions League, that were winning every Premier League, yeah. that were dominating Europe, had won the World Club Championship. These were genuine, genuine global superstars that were getting top European prizes every year. Even the Liverpool side that went on to win the UEFA Cup with Gerard Michael Owen. So they had actual world beaters um, in that side. This team have got Harry Kane, who's still not won a trophy as a professional footballer, as their top setter forward. Um, Bakaya Sacco, who's won an FA Cup, young. Um, Ryan Sterling's won everything that he can within England, that's fair, but he's dropped off the, the major European stage. So, no. Jack Grealish, what, which Jack Grealish won keeping Aston Villa in the Premier League two years in a row? Like these, these cannot be put at this, this, this time. They need to go on and win. Mason Mount has won the Champions League. Reese James doesn't yeah. start and has won the Champions League. That England team for 2002 had loads of Champions League winners in it from Man United. That's the difference. This isn't a team that are, that are there yet. Um, top players, but it's just this. Everyone probably agrees with us. It's the Premier League bias because they're seen by the world over. The, this massive gen and that's why they don't know who Italy are and why Italy are probably going to win a tournament many times over before England get to another final probably doesn't help when you've got Danny Murphy saying ah oh, Donnarumma looks alright like <laughs> just it's, there's there's a breathtaking ignorance I think for the, the pundits you can just tell that 
they haven't done proper research a lot of the time into these teams and it's Serie A's not hard to watch you know it's it's little things that really really annoy me about the coverage in these kind of tournaments and we're about to get more of it because England Germany is coming so I, I just I couldn't help myself I had to have a rant <laughs> <laughs> but I um, I noticed uh, Wald being cheeky there saying it's Steve Clark in charge of Scotland's golden generation since he qualified I wouldn't call us a golden generation for us because again they've not achieved anything even if we'd go through the knockouts we're not there yet we need to see how the likes of Gilmore and so on develop because I, I just it's the fact that everyone just wheels out that phrase at any given opportunity that really annoys me it should be reserved for as you say John that England side that had all those Champions League winners that was genuinely full of quality like every position um, as much as I hate to say it but I think I think it's probably fair for Belgium that they're at the kind of they're probably finished with it now at this point they're not even at the end of it I think you can't really call this set of players now a golden generation because unless they win this tournament I guess this is a final opportunity as far as I see it do you think they're going all the way Ben? no um, I think um, for me I still I still think France are the, the team from, from that side of the draw um, all the way I don't I don't see anything from well obviously they look great Belgium but that, that, that side of the draw is tough let's be honest but I think France have, have just got that winning mentality um, all the way, and I think that, that France still still do the job and get through to the, the final. I don't don't get me wrong. I, I don't I don't even think Italy, uh, sorry Belgium, will get past um, Italy. To be quite honest, I think Italy will be solid against Belgium and, and, and limit our chances. Um, again, I'm saying that's if Belgium does get through, but um, I don't think that that uh, Belgium have come up. By, Came up against the defence as good as Italy's um, so far, and I think that'll be the thing if they get through, they play Italy next, and that'll be the the, t- the test for them, and whether or not they can break that defence. So, into the other games then, because we've talked, we touched on France, given that they'll likely now be Italy's uh, next opposition, and I think they actually touched on Sweden. Is it yourself, John? That says Sweden might go um, go quite far here. I think we passed Ukraine now. Is there anyone else in these knockouts that you see either under the radar or very much on the radar going, say, at least semi-final finals? Not for me. I think it nah. looks pretty cut and dry in terms of um, both halves of the draw. France, they're the team for me. I think it's Italy in the semis. It's Germany in the semis. It's Holland in the semis for me. I think that's the four. The, effectively, the four best teams I'd like we touched on with England, I haven't seen anything from England that says that they'll go beyond Germany, to be quite honest. Um, hot, and I keep saying Holland, fuck's sake. <laughs> Netherlands, um, <laughs> Netherlands, um, I see we've touched on them already, look pretty good. I think they've got enough to get past Czech. Um, whether they can beat a German side, I'm not not convinced, but France, Italy will be the game, that'll be the game of them. I think that'll decide who probably wins the whole thing. For me, uh, whoever gets past France or Italy is the team that will win the whole thing. Strong, don't mention the war vibes here. Um, Holland, Holland. Uh. <laughs> what, what? I don't even know what it is about not being able to say Holland anymore because it was always Holland in like Euro '96 and all that. And like the, it's, the it's World nothing, Cups. Um, it's nothing offensive. It's just the fact that calling them Holland is basically like calling Scotland Argyll and Butte. It's part of the country. It's not the whole country. Right, right, if right, that makes yeah. sense. Um, at least that was. The explanation that Alan McCoy yeah. and Clive Towsley gave. That's right. Fucking pedants, eh? <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm just quite enjoying seeing your rage about Keaton saying it. <laughs> that's not what he used to say. He used to always say it was the Holland teams. Yeah, it was, it was always Holland. It was, it, never, was... it was never the Netherlands, and it was obviously something's changed in the last day. I'm just going to call them, the, I just seen Wald there mention the Dutch. I'm just going to call them the Dutch from now on. Yeah. And that'll sort me out. Job done. A lot of love for Denmark in the chat. And I'm yeah. I'm on board. I'm fully on the, the Denmark bandwagon there. after what I said yesterday. I'm maybe even going to throw a cheeky fiver on them to, to get to the final each way, like to win it. So, what are we thinking? John, any other teams that I, jump out at you? Right, so we, we talked about this the last time. Um, I think with the system that England are about to come up against with Germany, they need to switch back to Russia 2018. 
and go mm -hmm. way back three. They need to go 3-4-3 three, three and match up against Germany. They need to use Kyle Walker as a right centre half and do the exact same thing we do with Tierney and Robertson. Because that right side with Reese James and Kyle Walker, or even Trippier and Kyle Walker, is their absolute strength. And it'll create space for Foden, Sterling, Grealish, uh, Foden, the Mount, whoever else you want to play in that team, and give Harry Kane actual service to score goals. Whoever you want to do, they have to match up against Germany. If they go in with the system they've been playing, they'll get beat by Germany. So if England switched to 3 4 3, I'd be worried more about England because I think if they can knock out Germany, they can they can get a bit of a roll. But if they play their system, they'll get knocked out. Um, I don't like France, and I said this before, it's because I don't like Benzema in that system. Yeah. I just don't. Um, I think with Benzema playing, Benzema is where you're going to get your goals. If you play Giroud, you're going to get goals for Griezmann, Pogba. Um, Mbappe and any, every other player because he brings other people into the team. I think Benzema is the out-and-out goal scorer and I see it. He seems to be taking up all the space Mbappe would use. Uh, that's what it really feels like. I think Mbappe's been uber quiet so far because he doesn't really have anything to do. I think Pogba's the only one that's tried to put him in over that top and he got that the softest penalty I've ever seen given in, in world football. Um, and I think Mbappe, I don't know what it is. I, honestly, do you know Mbappe is? Mbappe feels like your, your primary school pal that's moved to high school and got in with the wrong crowd. I think Neymar is having a <laughs> horrible effect because I watched him again with PSG and against Man City and I just thought, you've turned into an absolute wee dick. And this <laughs> thrown, thrown himself at the ground. He doesn't look like the same player that I was like loving three years ago. He seems like a wee petulant. Throwing himself at the ground when anyone touches him. Um, so I want I want Giro back on that side because I think with Benzema there, Benzema's going to be the one that scores the goals. If you put in Giro, you get a better team. It's just, honestly, it's so difficult because the season Benzema had and he scores two goals against Portugal, but he was only going to be the player that scored those goals in that game because of the way they play. I, I just don't like it. I think they're better suited with a, a wall player like Giroud. And, and I he's not ex-Arsenal, so that's obviously... <laughs> <laughs> No, I must admit, I do agree that Giroud works better for that team in the way they play, but I do need to pull you up on something, John, now you're back on here. Because the last time you were on, do you remember saying that Switzerland were the most boring team ever? Oh, mate, I don't know what was happened, awful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that Shaqiri had they turned up, and then no, suddenly Seferovic has scored a belt off for 25 Shikiri. yards. <laughs> Shaqiri was not my comment. Shaqiri was not my comment. Seferovic, however was my comment and i still stand by it he is boring as shit to watch <laughs> uh, but i think i can almost attribute that whole result to how bad turkey are at defending they are they are they they were everyone's dark horse i feel like everyone was touting them to yeah. go far based on a holland result and that was, yeah. that was it they looked awful um, and i think we'll see france deal with switzerland pretty comfortably and it'll ring true what i've seen the Dutch have got a lot to answer for because they made us think that we were good as well in a big tournament <laughs> game. <laughs> made Turkey look like dark horses, made us look like knockout boys. So, I um, unfortunately, let's let's just blame the Dutch <laughs> instead of ourselves. <laughs> um, just uh, another thing that's I know this is a very biased point for Aldo, but Edward is he in me a shout? Maybe a leading the line for France. I'm assuming. The answer's going to be no, but I'd rather play Giroud, I think. I mean, obviously, Edward's got an absolute bundles of talent and he's a he's a good player, but I haven't seen anything from the France national side team selections that will say that even he'll get, get much of a look in at all. So I don't think he's pitched in against um, Switzerland. I think if you are going to change the system, it's probably Giroud that comes in, but yeah. um, I, I don't really know if they would decide to change that team after the, the performance against Portugal. I think um, you'll find that they'll probably stick with what they what they they had and they'll try and play the same way. Yeah, the guy's not had a great season in Scotland, which doesn't really qualify you to start for France alongside Mbappe. I don't think. But as long as as long as he makes his next move correctly, he'll be France's centre forward for the next tournament. That's a good totally. point. Yeah, as long as he makes the right move, because. Benzema's aging. I don't think he's he's not sold me in this at all. Giroud will not be in a This will be Giroud's swan song at tournament football. Yeah. Um, so, and Dembele's moved to Athletic Madrid, where I think he's going to struggle again because of how good Suarez has been. So, Edward, if he makes the right move to the right team this season, he'll be Francis number nine in the next tournament. Absolutely no doubt about that. Yeah, that's, that's a really good point, actually. Um, the thing with Edward leaving, though, is he's probably not going to be able to go to France given that there's no money now in Liga, yeah. so 
he's going to have to be very clever about where he where he goes if he's going to get games and at a decent level. You know, it's there's not that many teams of money going about there now. Is the long and short of it, and I can't see him going to the Premiership where he's not going to get a game with your Man City's, your Man U's, maybe the level below your Aston Villas, that kind of team. What do we think? What about Edward to Spurs to replace Harry Kane? <laughs> that, I mean that. What, if you're Spurs, that's the kind of transfer you do. The fucking tight as hell with money, and they're going to spend Dang. 60, 70, 80 million trying to replace Harry Kane. You could probably pick up Edward for like what 20 million or something like that. Yeah. And you take the gamble when it, obviously if it doesn't pay off, then so be it. But um, if you're Spurs, you maybe you maybe look at him and go, ah, that that's an option for us. Um, I would happily see him. I'm a Spurs fan, but I would love, I would not love to see him, but I think it wouldn't be a terrible decision given how Spurs like to spend money or don't like to spend money as it is. Um, I think that would be the, the potential play. But again, the other thing is, is he suited to the Premiership? I'm not too sure. Would he maybe be able to go to Europe? Um, maybe to the Serie A or um, La Liga or somewhere like that? Uh, as you say, he's not going to go to Liga 1 because France, there's, there's no money there. It's, yeah. um, they're not spending 15, 20 million pounds on a striker, let's be honest. So um, It'll be interesting to see where he ends up. But I mean, I'd like to see the Spurs, the Spurs shoot. I'm, I'm for that. I'm, I'm totally behind that. After accusing John of going full Arsenal, he's just put Spurs five times into a conversation in about a minute. Are oh, you on the one topic? That's all right. That's all right. John's had five different references on five different occasions. Come on now. It's not quite the same. Uh, funny games. This is why these two are on together, by the way. Um, West Ham is an interesting shout. I could see that, and I could also see Atalanta. Like, I think he suits Italian football. Like, He's basically a B Tech Lukaku, isn't he? He's B Tech Lukaku. If you order Lukaku off wish, you might get <laughs> odds on Edward. <laughs> That's the old phrase, isn't it? But, He's um, not going to West Ham. I honestly do you know who's set. If West Ham are picking up a striker from the old firm, they're picking the unhinged, psychotic one who will <laughs> undo himself the same way De Canio did to Londoners. It's Morelos. If West Ham want a striker that's going to embody their mental fan base and their crazy football, it's somebody that's hustling, <laughs> bustling like him. Um, Edward's a great striker, but there's a reason that like um, an Arsenal wouldn't take him as with mm-hmm. Arteta specifically as the type of pressing they want. It's the reason Arteta doesn't bounce on Lacazette too often. He thinks he's too lazy. He wants an aggressive pressing striker, and Edward ain't that. I think Edward to Spurs yeah. is actually a tremendous shout, by the way, to replace Kane. I think that would work an absolute treat with the players they've got. You heard it here first. If it happens, we'll Sorry. take the credit for it. We'll take it. Danny, <laughs> Danny Murphy about the night talking about Edward <laughs> Spurs. Watch this. He's, he's been full attention. Ah, he seems an okay player, this Edward. Yeah, uh, he's yeah. all right. <laughs> Play just Celtic. He's all right. Yeah, he's all right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Moving back towards the Euros away for Scottish trip bargain. I think the easiest way to to kind of round this off, we've talked a wee bit about the trampled bet at the very start. Um, we kind of references here and there and a uh, kind of bets have either been placed or like that have looked decent through the tournament is there anything that's sticking out to any team that you'd maybe put a wee each way on or any particular kind of bet you've seen that you think oh i'm having a bit of that well we all grabbed um on our podcast we all grabbed italy as being the absolute standout i think they were like 12 to 1 at one point i think andy got them mm. at which was ridiculous i got them at eights when i found out that they were still that high priced um, Immobile's dead, like because of how well Ronaldo and Lukaku have been doing, which is unfortunate because that was my double bet. But um, Italy were the ones from the start, and um, you won't get them anywhere near that price anymore. Um, it was a good one I got start of the tournament was Lukaku top scorer, De Bruyne, player of the tournament, was forty to one. Um, that was something I championed right at the start because I thought that looked really tasty, and I still think that's on course to be the the one for me. Um, Lukaku Golden Boot. I still think you good odds in Lukaku Golden Boot because of how many goals Ronaldo scored. Yeah. But I think, as we've said, I think Ronaldo's tournament finishes tonight and Lukaku's goes a couple more games. So I think Lukaku's still decent odds to be Golden Boot. Um, but apart from that, like we pretty much, I think, and Andy's pretty much called the Euros so far. Um, every like permutation of everyone that's qualified, with the exception of Scotland, because he'd back to Scotland, he thought we'd get out that group. So I think if you replace Scotland with Czech Republic, Andy's pretty much nailed 
everyone in the positions that they were going to be in and how they were getting through and, and the people who have went through in the first two games so far. And for tonight, he's got... He said, like, Netherlands, obviously, but he said it's a toss of a coin. Absolute toss of a coin, depending on how, how Portugal turn up. Um, but I think I would look at Lukaku. Oh, who's that tonight? Oh, here. Who, Wald McConville. That is a great, great shout, by the way. Pepe and Danilo to get carded is a tremendous, tremendous double. That is amazing. All right, okay, that's to the... one is very generous on that, by the way. Very yeah. generous. Kiefer Moore, as I said, 5-1 to one yesterday. There's so much discrepancy between Bet365 and Skybet. There's so much to look at, but that is a tremendous shout. Oh, there we go. That's that's probably my best sorted. <laughs> oh good my man, God. well there you go. You've made John a happy man. Oh my Ronaldo God, that's Lukaku even... to score Pepe to be carded 20 to 1 as well. That's Aye, that, that seems that's far too high odds, doesn't that's it? That's way too high, man. That's oh yes. There's money to be made tonight, <laughs> is what we're saying. John, you've never John, seen the man so excited. <laughs> John, you're obviously on the trampoline, but you're big on the old charity bets. Tell you what, pick a bet to tonight. I'll stick 10 quid on it. Uh, any money we'll give to back on side. There we go. There we go. Let's what, do you, that. Tell me what one you want to go for, and I'll, and I'll get the money on, and we'll do a bit of a charity, hopefully. I, I think that 20 to 1 is the one. I think that Ronaldo Lukaku to score and Pepe to be carded, I think that is an absolute nailer of a bet. So, so we're going for? Right, we'll go with that then. And right. you know what? I'll I'll double that up. I'll do the same thing. So we bet three six five. You can bet twenty five quid on any bet. And Ben, you'll know this. I'll put this on over three point five goal kicks and get a return of twenty five pound three pens, which will initiate a twenty five pound free bet. Which I'll stick on this, and if it comes in, I'll stick all of that money to charity as well. There we go. Same thing. Same and if you go. didn't understand all of that, save your money. <laughs> <laughs> But no, they 25 quid charity bet. I'm up for that. So that's go. what we're going for. Shoe. Good shout, mate, in the chat. If that goes in, right, work this out for me. 25 quid on that would come back five euro. Plus my tenner yeah. as well. Plus your tenner yeah. as well, aye. So even more. Got a good 700 quid. 700 quid to charity if that comes in. There we go. Job done. We'll go. Who we go for back on side? Is that a good football on charity? Yeah, do that. We'll go that. Go for it. Yeah. Danilo, will he play? He went off injured for France. I think he's the kind of guy that Portugal just seem to rely on. Like they've got a certain starting eleven, maybe intertwining one or two players on the attacking side that can come in and out. But I think Danilo is probably going to play, assuming he's not absolutely jiggered. But Dead. what do you think? That's a good point because that's who Polina replaced and he stood out. Yeah. So. Maybe not, actually. And in, in, uh, second thought, maybe he won't start. I think it will be Paulinho that starts, actually. There's a good topic to finish on, actually. Have we been watching the Copa America as well as the Euros? I've, I can't watch it. I'll be honest. I'm, I, I was into it at the very start, but see as soon as you've watched Euros games with fans and atmosphere, and there was one particular day, I think it was maybe the second day of the Copa, where... I just seen a game in Hungary with a full crowd, brilliant atmosphere. I turned on the the Copa that night as Brazil in an empty stadium, and it's just lifeless. It, I just I can't watch football with no fans now. Now that I'm back, I just to, can't stay awake. It's my problem. I'm but just, that as well. <laughs> <laughs> after ten o'clock, I'm, I'm in my bed, man. I'm not sticking on Brazil or whoever else to watch. Not a chance. I've not <laughs> I've not even I've not even bothered because in my mind, if I think. European based BBC commentators know nothing about the Euros. I cannot imagine <laughs> the insight I'm getting at Copa America. The second string will be out in force because they're all the Euros, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Danilo is the Marcus Senna of this Portugal team. Big shout what, there for Andy. What a player. That's a great shout, Marcus Senna. Um, Andy is on tomorrow, by the way, if you want to listen to his uh, hot takes. And I'm sure he can pull apart and we've said it's going to be wrong today as well. So he's, uh, he's doing his scouting. Um, yeah, Brazil are dominating. But you're right, Charmander. I've, I've kept trying the results, even though I've not been really watching the games. The only thing I've really watched was big uh, Ben Brereton and Diaz Amazing. scoring for Chile. He can't speak a word of Spanish. He's just, <laughs> he's, he's been called up because a football manager. It's a brilliant story. <laughs> like, they, they found out, and I think it was. The video I saw was a programme interview he gave to the Blackburn programme guy. He said, oh, my mum's for Chile, so I could technically play for them. 
and now he's playing in the cop and he's scoring goals. Brilliant. <laughs> Outstanding. He's added in Diaz to make himself sound more Chilean <laughs> <laughs> as well. Brilliant. But I love stories like that, like Mark Burchill playing for Trinidad and Tobago, those kind of yeah. ones as well. Rory McKenzie from Kamal's it. He's Trinidad and Tobago by his That's gran it. or something like that. It's like he plays for them because he obviously was never going to play for Scotland because he's never going to be that good enough. But uh, um, he went and played for Trinidad and Tobago. Following like, the footsteps of Russell Latter, pair of nice. You got a lot of Scottish Canadians these days as well, don't you? But um, that basically kind of brings us towards the end of this. So I will ask you one final question then. Who's winning it? After we've seen Italy kind of stumble a wee bit, we got any different thoughts or are we still going Italy? I fancy Italy myself, yeah. Don't get me wrong, I have France, Germany as a final, one of my bets. So keen to see that happen, but I think from... I'm looking at um, Italy so far, I don't think Indy's beating them. What are we thinking, John? I'm the same. I'm financially invested. Um, I love any time, you know that way, I just love watching teams belt out their national anthem. And Italy <laughs> is everything for me. And I'm financially backing them. I want them to do well. And yeah, it's, it's Italy. Italy all day for me. Spoiler alert. Charmander is not coming home, mate. I'm sorry. But <laughs> the Xbox controller than Charmander come on. I haven't said that. I could see England beating Germany and then going out in disgrace to a so-called weird nation. I can nah, definitely see that scenario. It's written for them to get pumped off Germany, man. Let's be honest. They'll set up for that. The fact they're glorifying a game they lost 4-1 in, that highlights everywhere at the minute the... Um, the freak disallowed goal for Lampard. It's like, but it wouldn't have changed the game. I, do you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't get. I don't get why they're not showing a game they beat England. In. Eh, sorry, beat Germany. In. Why would you not show the five-one game yeah. in the build-up? But yeah. hey ho, maybe it's just me. <laughs> the Scots need to go to Trinidad to get a game because half the team is English. Shy, that's true as well. Right. Thanks very much again, gents, for jumping in. We'll uh, no doubt get you back in as uh, the tournament's winding down. But as you can see in John's name there, at Scots Abroad Pod, find him on Twitter, get listening, cracking podcast. Ben, yourself, where can people find you? Uh, just on Twitter, at Mr Ben Grant, but also check out the official catch-up podcast and all your great Lowland League um, insight. Um, Moza and myself are there, we talk about every team in the Lowland, especially Bonnie Lake, we talk about them a lot, so um, <laughs> shout out to my, my, my new friends at Bonnie Lake. I was going to say, I knew you'd drop that in somehow. Um, I'm going to do something different today, folks. I'm actually going to go and raid somebody, so well, let's see if there's anyone live now that we can jump over to. Spread the love a wee bit, because I've not done raiding at all the whole time we've done these Euro breakfast shows. It's probably about time that I start doing it. Um, I'll throw you over to a bit of football manager, will I? So, thanks again for watching we will be back live tomorrow morning as I said with Alba Mata in the chat Andy I'm going to fire you over to Curti just now job done uh, and I would say a quick thank you to everyone that's dropped a follow today as well I see there's a few of them so if I run through Christoph Yorkshire Gamer Luca Poza GM thank you very much guys really appreciate it so what you're Enjoy saying is me and John me and John bring in the fans is that what you're saying that's basically what I'm saying <laughs> aye, the eye candy obviously <laughs> obviously <laughs> so see you tomorrow folks and I will be back to not talk Arsenal we'll see you <laughs>